This video is a companion to the video about how to make a cookie cutter using SketchUp. This is a cookie cutter that we made in the SketchUp video. Uh, the difference between this cookie cutter and the cookie cutter uh, that we made in the SketchUp video is that this one is actually uh, has dimensions that I know would make a good cookie cutter. Um, I'm not going to tell you what those dimensions are because my students are required to measure with calipers to figure out what dimensions they like and make those decisions for themselves. But these are the ones that I like. So you can kind of get a visual idea of the proportions that I think are appropriate um, so that you can tell if your cookie cutter is way too stretched out or using way too much material. The one that we're going to create today, though, is going to be using some symmetry. So we're going to use the uh, same product design and woodworking millimeters template. We're always, as always, going to start with a rectangle that we can draw on. We want to want to make that rectangle the right dimensions for us so that it's a cookie-sized rectangle. We're going to go to the top view. We're going to zoom in. I'm going to assume that you've seen the other video, so I'm going to sort of skip over some of the details here. But what I want to show you is how to make one half of your design and then make the other half match. So what you can do is you can take your tape measure tool and you can set up a guideline straight down the middle. So you want to measure from a flat surface and create a vertical guideline like this. And then you want to make sure your design ends up on that line so that when you make a copy, it, there won't be any gaps. So I'm going to use the arc tool here, and I'm going to draw some smooth arcs. You can add more segments to your arcs if they are too jagged. Um, and I'm also going to use the uh, tangent at vertex property to make sure that my cookie cutter has smooth transitions between the arcs. And you can see I've drawn half a heart here, so I'm going to need to make another half that's exactly the opposite of that. So what I'll do is I'll erase this box as I'm done drawing the arcs. And that box made sure that all my arcs are nice on a flat plane there. I'm going to select my object. I'm going to use the Move tool to make a copy. And I'm going to move it over to the right, tap Control to make a copy. And I'm going to make sure that I move it way over. Because my next step is to flop it over and reverse its direction by pulling the Scale tool through itself until it gets to negative 1. And since nothing's a group right now, I really want to make sure these two lines don't touch. Otherwise, they'll stick together, and I won't be able to pull them apart. And then I'm going to grab from the endpoint and move to the endpoint so that it perfectly lines up. In order to fill in an enclosed space like this, I just draw a line from one edge to the other, anywhere, and erase that line. And now I have a surface. Again, this is the cookie, so I need to offset outwards to make the cookie cutter. Um, I need to offset outwards the distance that's going to work for the handle and the cutter. In this case, I'm going to randomly choose 7 millimeters. Why not? And you'll see that in this corner here, it caused some troubles. So I'm going to erase those troubles just like before. I'm going to erase the interior lines just like before. And I'm going to use this for my handle. I'm going to push pull it up however tall I want my handle to be. I'm going to offset inwards. I use 7, so I'm going to offset inwards, let's say 5 this time. And that will leave 2 for the cutter width. And then I can see that I need to push pull this up to make it stick out above the handle. I need to offset inwards again. And I said 2, so I'm going to use 2. And you can see I've perfectly recreated my original heart that I drew. When I push pull down, I need to inference that bottom edge. And there's my cookie cutter. Now this cookie cutter will do double as a letter opener if I'm not careful because this edge will be very sharp in plastic. So to fix that, what I'll do is I'll draw a line straight across here. And you can do this with any sharp points. If you really want a sharp point on your cookie cutter, remember the inside surface is what matters. The outside is just there to hurt people. So you don't want that. You want your user to be able to, to use your cookie cutter without cutting in your hands. You want to be able to get this off the print bed of your 3D printer without cutting yourself up. So just draw some straight lines across and push pull them until they have no thickness and those will go away. So there's my finished symmetric cookie cutter. So that's one option. And if I make it a group, I can check and make sure that it is in fact a solid group. So I'm going to draw another cookie cutter now using rotational symmetry instead. And we used rotational symmetry earlier to make a bracelet. Um, so this rotationally symmetric object we're going to use the rotate tool to make the shape go around. And this one's a little bit more complicated and maybe a little less familiar as an idea of symmetry. Instead of just drawing um, one line down the middle, I'm going to draw one line down the middle both directions so that I have one section that I'm going to do. 
and I want to also mark where I want to start and where I want to stop. So if I come down from this line here and I decide that that looks about right, I'm going to round it off to make it exactly 15 millimeters, and I'll make 15 millimeters in from this side too, and I'll use those two intersections so that I make sure that my lines line up as I rotate around. Um, I'm going to use the arc tool again, and I'm sort of going to draw an abstract shape here. I'm going to use the arc tool with the tangent at vertex option. And if you were planning on making a, a really thin feature like this, you, you want to exaggerate it a little bit, make it a little bit thicker, because you are making a cookie cutter. And the same thing is true for most 3D prints. You want to sort of exaggerate features so that things aren't too thin, so that they show up in 3D prints, or they show up if you're making it out of cookie dough. So here's my design. It starts here, it ends there. I know that those two lines will line up. I got to think a little bit about what it'll look like if this is going down a little bit and this is kind of going up a lot. It'll look a little okay here. So I'm going to use that as my, my design. Since I'm done with the design, I can get rid of the lines of the rectangle. I want to keep my guidelines for now. I'm going to use the rotate tool. So first I select what I want to rotate. Then I choose rotate. I choose the center of rotation. I choose one point to start rotating. And you can see I'm rotating. I need to rotate 90 degrees, but I actually want to make a copy. So I tap control to toggle copies. And I can click right there. I can type in 90 degrees to make sure it's 90 degrees. After I make one copy, I can always make multiple copies by typing the number of copies I want, three copies in this case, followed by X, and then hit Enter. So there's my symmetric cookie cutter shape. Um, I can draw a line across it to have it filled in, and you can see that there's no issues, so I don't have to search for little problems. But this is my cookie cutter shape. Now this shape is complicated enough, and I'm, I'm aware enough about these, these little round areas here that I might lose some detail if I use the same method. So this is an alternate method for making sure that I maintain exactly this cookie shape. So if you've put a lot of time into drawing your cookie shape, what I recommend is you use the Move tool to move a copy. You tap Control to move a copy. You move it way over, move it over to a certain amount that you know. It doesn't matter as long as it's way out of the way. I'm going to use 400 millimeters. And there'll be a copy over there, way, way over there. And I can get to it later if I need to. Because what will happen is, let's say I'm going to use my um, offset tool. And I'm, this time, I'm, I'm going to use a random number again. I'm going to use uh, 15 millimeters. Now, you can see I've overlapped here. These sides have overlapped. And that's not a big deal, because what I can do is erase those overlaps and just keep the outside outline just like I did last time. But when I do that, one of the things that you need to be careful of is the fact that you're, you're going to have lost some detail. If I use this surface and I offset back inwards, I'm never going to get that original shape back, which is why it's important that I save the original shape over off to the side. So I'm going to just follow the, the same steps I normally follow, give this little push-pull up. I used 15 for my offset outward, so this time I'm going to come in, I don't know, 10 on the handle. And you can see even, even that just didn't really do what I wanted. This is just not right. So I can sort of guesstimate what, what happened here. This corner maybe caused a problem. I can erase this problem by just sort of drawing a straight line across here on all four sides, um, and then erasing the problematic lines. Make sure that you end up creating an actual surface. Um, erase any little extra bits, like these little extra bits here. You're going to have to do it four times because of our symmetry. Because Again, the shape of this doesn't matter as much as that interior shape. That interior shape is what your cookie will actually look like. And that's what's going to matter the most for you. So now I have my handle, and I have something that can go up and act as a cutter, even though it's, it's sort of not made in the right shape. And you can see I have a problem here. Um, sometimes when you have uh, issues with the offset like this, you can see this surface is not being divided by this line. So there's a weird way of fixing that. You just select this whole thing, and you choose Intersect Faces with Model. And it'll try and see if that's touching anything and split things up. And now it's split up. So now I can do my push-pull that I need to do. And I'm going to push-pull this up. And this is going to look like a cookie cutter without a hole, which is perfect for what I, my purposes are right now. I'm going to make it a group. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the solid tools to make the hole. So I'm going to push-pull 
this cookie shape that I want so that I have something that I'm going to use to cut this hole out. And I'm going to make this a group. And since I know that it's exactly 400 millimeters to the right of where I want it, I can move it to the left exactly 400 millimeters and it'll fit exactly where I want it in my cookie cutter. So you can see that there are these big areas here where my, my cutter shape was just not the same shape as the cookie was supposed to be. But that's okay. And what I can do now is I can use the solid tools to subtract. It says subtract first solid from second keep only the result in the model. So I'm going to hit subtract and we're going to click on this solid group and subtract it from this solid group and I magically have a cookie cutter that will actually cut out the cookie shape I wanted. And if I was going to be picky about this, I would get rid of these sharp corners that are sticking out here. There's really no reason for them to be sharp and sticking out. I would also hollow this area out here all around so that I would use less material and it would be easier to cut. But this is a symmetric cookie cutter that is rotationally symmetric. Please check out our other videos on, on different topics and thank you.